Thank you, Father. Genesis 18, verse 19. Genesis 18, 19. I'm going to read it out from the NLT version, New Living Translation. God testifies about Abraham saying, I have singled him out so that he will direct his sons and their families to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just. I have singled him out so that he will direct his sons and their families to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just. Then I will do for Abraham all that I have promised. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray that you will speak into our lives. Breathe your strength and your word into us so that we live a life that is according to the patterns of your word. Release grace and anointing in this place that will make the proclamation of your word effective. Lord, we pray every resistance to the preaching of God's word, every critical spirit be bound in Jesus' name and we give victory and praise to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Today, as we, the world, celebrates Father's Day, we want to acknowledge all our fathers who has been a source of inspiration, comfort, and a model for us. Above all, we thank our Heavenly Father for His goodness and His tender mercies towards us. Today's message is titled, Living Up to God's Expectations. Living Up to God's Expectations. God Almighty testifies about Abraham and he says that he will direct Abraham, will direct his sons and their families in the way of the Lord. What is the way of the Lord? The way of the Lord is doing what is right and just. Praise the Lord. I want to bring before us five qualities of Abraham that could be emulated in our lives, especially as fathers who has been given the responsibility to raise up their children in the fear of the Lord. I ask you to pay attention through the message that you don't shut yourself off in between or turn away from your live stream as you are watching this. We see that God calls Abraham. Abraham was a man who responded to the call of God. As fathers, every one of us have to respond to the call of our heavenly father. As children of God, Every one of us have been called. We have been called by a high calling, a holy calling, and a heavenly calling. It's easy to remember. God has called all of us with a high calling, with a holy calling, and with a heavenly calling. These callings are applicable to every one of us. Praise the Lord. What is it? High calling, holy calling, heavenly calling. It's applicable to every one of us. But within the callings of God, there are unique, specific callings that God places upon our lives. Praise the Lord. Today's message is a calling upon the fathers. 
That doesn't mean the mothers don't have a calling. The mothers have a calling too. We talked about it during the Mother's Day. Today we're going to focus on the fathers. Praise the Lord. Every father has been called. Praise the Lord. We'll explain that. Okay. And every one of us, regardless of who you are, a father, a mother, a young man, a young lady, a boy, a girl, every one of us have a unique calling also. Meaning, we have a unique assignment in life. Praise the Lord. We have a custom cut assignment from God upon our lives. And the earlier that we understand and discern what God's calling is upon our lives and align ourselves to that calling would give us much more time and room to fulfill that call upon our lives. Praise the Lord. We want to align our wills to the will of the Father so that we can fulfill what God desires to accomplish in and through our life. Praise the Lord. Abraham was a man who responded positively to the call that was placed upon, our, upon his life. As the scriptures unfold before us in chapter 11 and 12, we see that God calls him to come out of his homeland, to come out of his people group, to a place that God will direct him. Stephen, in his message, as it's recorded in the Acts of the Apostles, used a very particular terminology. This is how he puts it. He says, God of glory appeared to Abraham in the land of the Ur of the Chaldeans. So God of glory appears to Abraham and he calls him out of the place, out of the inhabitants, out of his family and friends, and to go to the land that God would show him. Of course, Abraham responded to the call without knowing what the destination is going to be. Praise the Lord. Listen, the call that God was placing upon Abraham was to be a father of nations. Praise the Lord. Israel, father of of nations that would be the channel through which God would send a blessing upon the world amazing one of a kind of a calling God calls Abraham out of a heathen land out of a out of a practice of idolatry calls him out and he says I'm going to make you the father of nations. See, when God's callings come upon our life, we in real time, it takes for us to reach to that calling. Praise the Lord. When God calls Abraham to be the father of nations and be a blessing to all nations, Abraham was not even a father. He did not have a single offspring. But the calling was what? To be the father of all nations. And through you, all nations will be blessed. Amen. Praise the Lord. When we hear the calling that God places upon our lives, sometimes it is hard for us to comprehend or believe. But when we take the steps of faith, and respond to the calling of God by being obedient, what happens is you will see the reality of God's calling materializing and manifesting in and through our lives. Praise the Lord. How vastly different is God's perspective concerning our lives and our own outlook upon our own life. Praise the Lord. Listen, God was not calling him to be blessed, but to be 
a blessing. Quite often, we are content by receiving a blessing through to understanding what to be blessed is, to understand when God blesses a person, the blessing is not confined to us so that we can just simply enjoy the blessing, just swallow the blessing, just gulp the blessing, and just, just enjoy our life by experiencing the blessing. God is a great blesser. When he blesses anyone, they have the potential and the possibility to become a blessing. There is a difference. We quite often settle for less. What is the less? We are content and happy. We say, Lord, bless me. I want to be blessed. But our prayer should be beyond. Our prayer should connect to the calling that God has for us. Our prayer should connect with God's purpose for us. Our prayer should connect with the vision that God has for us. We need to start envisioning our own lives with the vision that God has for us. Cooperate our wills with his will so that we will not settle to be blessed, but to become a blessed. What is the difference? When you are blessed, you are experiencing the blessing of God for yourself. But God wants you to be a blessing to others, meaning you become a channel of blessing to people. So the calling that God places upon Abraham is to become a blessing to the nation. Praise the Lord. See, quite often we forfeit what God wants to do in and for and through our lives. When you understand the design of what God intends to do through our lives, when we understand the scope of God's purpose for our lives, when we understand where God has plugged us in and how God wants us to not just simply enjoy and bask in his glory, but rather become a source of network so that we can become a blessing. Praise the Lord. That affects our spiritual life, that affects our physical life, that affects life, God wants you to be a source or a channel of blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So don't fall, don't settle for the, bless, or the less. God desires that we be a means of blessing to many within the calling that God has placed upon our lives. Abraham was obedient to that call that God placed upon his life. Just think about it. What a blessing it is for children to have a father. Listen to this. It is such a blessing for the children to have a father who responds positively to the call of God. Praise the Lord. I want you to, I'm just going to go a little bit tilt a little bit further. It's a blessing for every child to have a father who responds positively to the call of God. Because when you fall within the call of God, when you are centered in the call of God, God makes you fruitful and effective in every realms of our lives. Now, Going a little further, how, what kind of a blessing it is, praise the Lord, for a wife to have a husband who responds positively to the call of God. One, children are blessed when their fathers fall and obey the calling of God. Number two, the wives are blessed to have a husband who is obedient 
to the calling of God. See, when we talk about calling, God's calling upon our lives, usually we just simply confine it to ministerial aspect. Of course, there is ministry, and some people are into professional ministry. But it's not just simply ministry, praise the Lord, that God calls us into. God's calling rests on every father. God's calling rests upon every father. To do what? It's a calling to raise up your children in the ways of the Lord, in the fear of the Lord in the patterns of God's word, according to the design of God's purpose. Every father has been called to raise up their children in the fear of the Lord. This is how Paul puts it in Ephesians 6, 4. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instructions of the Lord. That's a calling upon every father. No father is exempt from that calling. If God has made you a father, you have a tremendous calling upon you, primarily as a father, to raise up your children, train them up in the fear of the Lord. Praise the Lord. All fathers are not called to be preachers. All fathers are not called to be teachers. All fathers are not called to be missionaries. All fathers are not called to be innovators. All fathers are not called to become people who move in different realms of life. But every father has a common calling to raise up the children in the fear of of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, this is a very important call. Because when God entrusts us with a child, with a life into our hands, as fathers, we have a tremendous responsibility to raise them up and teach them the ways of the Lord. Praise the Lord. The, the phrase Bring them up in the fear of the Lord means to rear them up into maturity. Praise the Lord. To bring them up, to groom them, to mentor them, to mold them, to sh sharpen them, to shape them up according to the scriptures. That's a tremendous calling God has placed upon our lives. And every father's say amen to it. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. It's not just simply to have children, but to bring our sons and daughters in the fear of the Lord so that the design that God has for them will also be fulfilled. Praise the Lord. Each generation shall enumerate the works of God to the next generation. So what God intends is our God is a God from generation to generation. Each generation ought to have a remnant. Each generation need to have people who love God, who serve God, who would enumerate the goodness of God, who will exhibit and express the grace of God to a world that does not know God. God. Praise the Lord. So as fathers, we have a tremendous responsibility. One is to raise them up and to bring them up means, number one, is verbal instructions. Praise the Lord. Giving verbal instructions. Verbal instruction will include loving them, nurturing them, showering them with your love, your warmth, and your affection and also rebuking them and correcting them in the way that God's word allows us to do. That's one part. The other part is becoming a model for them. 
praise the Lord. Becoming a role model for them. That is very important. A father had a practice of early in the morning on his way to work. He would stop by a bar for a couple of drinks. And he felt that instead of having a couple of drinks on his way back home and exposing his kids, his children to his lifestyle, he decided the best thing to do is when he's going to work, he will hit the bar and then he will go to work. So that was his practice. He did this every morning. One day it was cold and it was snowing. He was slowly on his way to work. He decided to stop by the bar and do his daily routine stuff and then go to work. All right. As he was walking, he heard a soft voice in his back. First I thought that it's just the snow that's coming down. But then he realized there was seemed that somebody was following him. He turned back and he was shocked. In that freezing temperature, the man got frozen as he saw that his little kid was actually following him. And he gave him a quizzical look and the kid looked up into his father's eyes, smiled and said, Daddy, Today, I want to follow in your footstep. So the little fellow was jumping to find himself land in the daddy's footstep. Immediately, it struck daddy and he realized that he was not going into the right place for his little one that was following him. Immediately, daddy made a decision that he is going to redirect his step because he didn't want this little one to follow in that footstep. Is there anything in our life that we don't want our children to follow in our footstep? Is there anything that we don't want our children to discover about us? And if there are stuff in our lives that need not be discovered, I hope and I pray that we have some real good security system that we are able to shield them from. Everyone makes errors in their life. There is we all make mistakes. There are no perfect fathers on this side of earth. We have a perfect father up there, heavenly father. But intentionally making choices, which we know that we don't want our offsprings to walk in that pathway, is not good. So just like this father that we talked about, he did was immediately realized the error of his way, and he changed his destination, and he changed his lifestyle. We don't want to change after we are discovered. So why don't we change before we are discovered? Praise the Lord. Responding to the call of God to be good, godly, noble Fathers that will direct our children in the ways of the Lord, which is just and right. Praise the Lord. We have to be careful where our tracks lead our children into. The second trait that we want to bring before us is, he was not only a man who responded positive to the call of God, Abraham was a man who was a man of prayer. Abraham was a man of prayer prayer. We read his prayer recorded. Number one, he prays for his offspring before he was even born, meaning he asked for, he waited, he asked the Lord, Lord, how long? You want to, you have pronounced the blessing on me, but I don't see anything 
that would initiate that blessing into reality. Wow. We also can face such dilemmas where God pronounces his blessing on it, but we don't have that very thing, very factor that initiates that blessing. And that, for that, Abraham prayed. He asked the Lord, Lord, how long should I wait for this? Praise the Lord. So we see that Abraham prayed concerning the promised son that God had promised him. We see again Abraham prayed for the welfare of his son Ishmael. And then we see a very interesting prayer of Abraham. Abraham prayed for Lot and the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah. I want to say something very, very interesting here. See, unless we cultivate a habit of prayer, and it starts small, small, with those who are connected to us immediately. The circle of family that we have around us that's very close to our heart, we start our prayer there. But we never end our prayer there. I want you to look into your circle of prayer. Look into your circle of prayer. Who is included in the circle of prayer? Is it only you, your loving wife, and your children? Or is it only you, your husband, and your children? Or you have moved from there to the next circle? How wide is the scope of your circle? Look at this man. He prayed for the promise to materialize. He prayed for Ishmael's welfare. But he doesn't end there. He prays for his nephew who walked away from him. And he prays for those who are in Sodom and Gomorrah for the righteous. He stands in the gap. Our circle as fathers, as people who believe in God, our circle of prayer should widen with time. It should. Praise the Lord. Because you don't want your children to look at your prayer life and conclude that this is a self-centered prayer and I also am just going to revolve around the small circle that I've seen in my home. Think about it. Your children were to listen to you praying. How wide do you think your circle of prayer would be? Abraham was a man of prayer that impacted his generation to come. Next we see he was a man of faith. And every father, every mother, everyone should be people of faith. But fathers, men of faith. Abraham was a man of faith. And I want to draw your attention to a few words in the scripture. Abraham was a man who took faith ventures. You know how faith ventures begin? Faith ventures begin with one step of faith. Confucius put it like this. He said, a journey of a thousand miles starts with one step. Faith journey starts with the first step of faith you take. When you're obedient to the first step of faith, God takes you to the next step, and the next step, and the next step. Quite often, we see that the path is not unveiled for us because we're hesitant to take the first step. Many has taken the first step, but does not want to take the second step. This is a faith journey. I mean, we become sensitive to the Holy Spirit. He would lead us in this faith venture that becomes adventurous in life. Praise the Lord. First step of faith led to a lifestyle of faith, which became a model and a challenge for both his physical and his spiritual children. Who are the physical children of Abraham? And who are the spiritual children of Abraham? We are. Praise the Lord. Today, 
Abraham's faith has become a model because he took the first step of faith and he was not content with the first step of faith. He did what? He went into a lifestyle of faith ventures. Don't be content with the first step of faith you took, the second step of faith you took. May our children look at us and realize that we have a lifestyle of faith. Praise the Lord. The walk with God becomes exciting and adventurous when you take the step of faith. It becomes boring, mundane, and routine when you want to confine yourself to what you know and what you do. Praise the Lord. By faith, Abraham, when called, go to a place that he's not seen, he went. So we see his faith was a faith that went. By faith, he made his habitation in the promised land, meaning he stayed by faith. He went by faith. He stayed by faith. He was looking forward to the city with foundation, whose architect and builder is God. He had a sight of faith. Praise the Lord. By faith, Abraham, when he was past age and Sarah Hulsa was barren, was enabled to become a father. His faith was a becoming faith. Praise the Lord. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. His faith was a giving up faith. Praise the Lord. And most importantly, we see in Genesis 15, 6, which is also repeated in the New Testament, Abraham believed the Lord and he credited to him as righteousness. So I want you to look at the faith, the different phases of this faith. Number one, the faith that went. Number two, the faith that stayed. Number three, the faith that looked. Number four, the faith that became. Number five, the faith that gave. Number six, the faith that believed. Praise the Lord. In our life, as fathers, as men and women of God, God wants us to experience the different phases of faith. In this life journey, God orchestrates events in our life in such a way that you and I are exposed to different phases of faith. And that is not just simply confined to the spiritual plane. It could be applied to wherever God has placed you. It could be your marketplace. It could be your workplace. It could be in whatever profession that God has placed. God can, God can orchestrate events in such a manner that you are exposed to the different phase where you taste and see that God is good, which also bring forth a testimony of the goodness and the faithfulness of God, which has to be transmitted into our next generation. So they are equipped. They are equipped verbally by what we share, and they see us living that faith life. That was the kind of father that Abraham was. Praise the Lord. A man who lived by faith and a man who walked with God. Praise the Lord. See, any child who see his father, listen to me carefully, any child who sees his father responding to the call of God, a father who prays. A child that witnesses his father praying. A child who witnesses his father exercising faith need not be intimidated of abuse from his father. Because you cannot be connected to the heavenly father's heart of compassion and be abusive to your children. It's not. It doesn't fit. If you are connected to your heavenly Father's loving heart, providing heart, protecting heart, a heart of warmth, 
a heart that corrects us. Your offsprings have no reason to worry or to shy away from the love that flows through your heart. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's move on. Abraham was a man who spent time in his prayer closet, spending time with the Lord. Abraham was a man who exercised faith. Abraham also was a man of worship. Come with me for a minute here. Abraham was a man of worship. I want you to catch that glimpse, the picture of Abraham. You read about Abraham, wherever he went, he, he built an altar and he offered a sacrifice unto the Lord. Okay? So Isaac grew up. Isaac grew up seeing his father give so much prominence and priority to worship. Wherever he went, he built up an altar and he offered sacrifice. So now the picture is both Abraham and Isaac, they are going up the Mount Moriah to give worship unto the Lord, to offer a sacrifice to the Lord. I want you to look at this picture. Father and son, they both are climbing the mountain together. Their steps are synchronized. As the father is putting the step, so the son is putting the step. In Genesis, it recorded that the son carried the word that was needed to offer sacrifice. Abraham had the knife and Abraham had the fire. Praise the Lord. See, there is a time when strength increases and strength fades. When your strength increases, you carry larger burdens. When your strength fades, you move from the larger burden to the lighter burden. This is an understanding that exists between a father and a son whose steps are synchronized. Praise the Lord. Abraham at this point, who was over 100 years, was not carrying the heavier burden. He was carrying the knife and he was carrying the fire, which was absolutely necessary for a sacrifice. But young man, Isaac, he was carrying what? What was he carrying? Listen to this. Every child, every young man that's growing up under the care and the nurture of your fathers, under the care and the nurture of your parents, should have the wisdom and the understanding to know when the transition needs to take place. I am baffled sometimes when I see young men letting their Elderly parents carry the burden. There has to be a shift. There has to be a shift. Shift in carrying physical burden. Shift in carrying responsibilities. Shift in carrying obligations. There has to be a smooth transition. I'm going to break it down just in, in case you think it's ambiguous. Okay? When we were kids, our parents drove us to the prayer meeting. I grew up. I was waiting for me to get my junior license. And then finally I got my license. And I have my freedom. I have my four wheels. I'm flying all over the town. Time passes. Now my dad can't drive because he can't see at night. He's making mistakes. What do you think is a transition there? What do you think is a transition there? What do you think is a transition? Dad, call Uber. Why don't you call somebody who's in our neighborhood? That uncle is not doing anything. Call him for a ride. 
Well, they might call you. They don't need your advice for that. What are we saying? That's a common sense. It's a common sense. A father and a son that is, their steps are synchronized have an understanding. We live in a, in a place where it snows, right? Imagine it snowed. We had a blizzard. And I wait for my 60-year-old father to come from work to shovel the snow while I'm doing what? Doing what? Playing video games. It is what? A spontaneous transfer of responsibility and obligation. Talking about physical realm now. Now we move to the spiritual realm. Even in spiritual realm, that handing of baton, the transferring of baton has to be done smoothly and spontaneously. It is not taking the baton and striking on that. Son, here's the baton. Hold the baton. No. And for that, there ought to be a cultivation of discipline, a cultivation of love, a cultivation of what? Transferring the faith values. You don't see Abraham dragging Isaac to the Mount Moriah. No. It was a lifestyle. They both walked together. Have you ever paid attention to their conversation as they walked up? Their conversation was not about the servants at the base of the mountain who are no good. Their conversation was about what? About worship. About worship. The son has questions about worship. My dear fathers, when was the last time your children asked you spiritual questions. Ask you things from the Bible. Do they feel comfortable to ask you questions regarding what the scripture says? Isaac said, Father, we have the fire, we have the log, we have the knife. Where is the sacrificial lamb? And what was the answer of Abraham? Mind your own business. It's none of your business. Just shut up and come to the base and I will talk about it. Is that what he said? Abraham had no answer. So what he said? God will provide. And Isaac learned a big lesson in his life. That God is Jehovah Jireh. Do you know what? The unanswered questions of our life. Praise God. The unexpected events of our life. Praise God. The episodes that we cannot understand and comprehend. God has put a spiritual lesson in there. That you can transmit to your next generation. That when you don't have an answer to a question. You have one who answers all our questions. Praise God. When you feel that there is no way before you, when you feel that all doors are closed shut, when you feel that you can't explain the events of your life, you can always be candid and say, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shama. Jehovah, my banner. Jehovah, Nisi. Jehovah, Sitkanu, my righteousness. Jehovah, Ra, my shepherd. He was a man of worship. He showed what it is to worship. See, as we grow old, there is always something called the generation gap. Right? You maintain that generation gap. That's reality. That's real time. If your 
age is 50 and your child is 20, there is a 30-year-old difference. And if you are 60 and if your child is 15, the jack gap is wider. You know, the physical generation gap with time, it remains the same. But the heart can be connected. And that can defy the generational gap, of course. The styles may be different. The lingo is different. The word base that we use are different. But once the heart is connected, then it don't matter. The question is, is the heart connected? Is our hearts connected to our offsprings? Even when the, the styles are different, if our hearts are connected, praise the Lord, you know? We can have a strong bond. And God allows the heart to be connected. Do you know where? Do you know where? In the place of serving God and in the place of worship. Praise God. And that's created in the confines of your home when you spend time in worship. I will end it with one more thing. Abraham was a father who gracefully avoided conflicts. Some people master in the art of creating conflicts. Some people always love to thrive in the atmosphere of conflict. Do you know what Abraham did? He always did what? He diffused conflict. Case in point. When Abraham and Lot's herdmen got into an argument and a conflict, what did Abraham do? He told Lot, listen, the land is before us. You go to the right, I go to the left. You go to the left, I go to the right. Abraham was a senior man. He could have pulled the rank, but instead of pulling the rank, what he did? He yielded because he was gracious. Do you know? This was the first of the transaction that takes place. The next transaction that takes place is when Abraham says no to the riches from the king of Sodom and Gomorrah. And each time a transaction took place, God was a silent witness to the transaction. Let me tell you. Each time you make a transaction in whatever realm, when what belongs to rightfully yours, you yield for the sake of being gracious, for the sake of avoiding conflict, for the sake of being peacemaker. God is a silent witness to such transaction. When Abraham yielded to Lot, after Lot leaves, God tells Abraham, you walk to the right, you walk to the left. You go up the north and down south. You go east and you go west. Wherever your foot steps, I will give you that land. When he says no to the riches of the king of Sodom and Gomorrah, God appears to him and says, Abraham, do not be afraid. I am your shield. I am your exceedingly great Reward. Praise the Lord. Do you know when God becomes our reward? You cannot contain the reward. <laughs> when God blesses you, you cannot contain them. You cannot confine them. It automatically does what? It overflows because there is no man on earth who can contain the blessings that God pours into him. It will automatically overflow. And God wants all of us to become people like him. So we want our offsprings, all of the fathers, we want our offsprings to know that we are responding positively to the call of God. We want our offsprings to know that we are praying fathers. We want our offsprings to realize that we take steps of faith. We want our offsprings to understand that we are fathers who give importance to worship 
to a fellowship and coming together in the presence of God. We want our offsprings to realize that we are, our offsprings are part of the service to God. We also want our offsprings to realize that we are gracious. Praise the Lord. If we can weave the fabric from Abraham's traits into our lives, indeed, we will not only be blessed, we will become a channel of blessing to others. Would you like to be a father like that? I pray that God will make me a father like that as I yield myself to him. I want all fathers to rise up before the Lord. All fathers. If you're a father, just rise up before the Lord. I want to pray for you guys. And I want you to look at these fathers, these dads, and if you are a child, a son, a daughter that belongs to this dad, I want you to go and stand by him. If you are here in the house this morning, this afternoon, I want you to run to your father, wherever he is. And if father is confined in the middle of the pew, don't just stand there like a stone. Get out, come out in the pew, come out in the aisle, come out in the front. Give room to your offspring to come to you. So that's also a key, that we make room. We make elbow room for our children to access us. So when you are stepping out of the middle of the aisle, you are saying that I give room. I create a space for you to feel comfortable to come and stand by my side. Praise the Lord. Uh, for any reason, your dad is not here, and you are here, you can come up, I will stand with you. If your dad is not here, for whatever reason, you come up here, I will stand with you. Come. Praise the Lord. Come quick. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come up to the front. Come up. Come up here. Come quick. Come quick. Come quick. I want you to hold hands with your dad. Hold hands with your dad. For a change, I want you to look into that eyes. Maybe it's a stony face. But you look deep into those eyes. If you hold that stare, maybe those eyes would well up with tears, with love. Praise God. As you hold the hands with your fathers, I want you to know that this is a seasonal experience. This is a seasonal experience. There will come a time in your life where you yearn for you to hold the hands of your father. So cherish this moment. Cherish this moment. Love this moment. Love your parents with a greater love. And fathers, love your children. They might not be exactly as you envisioned. They might not have risen up to the level that you envisioned. But they are your child. They are your offsprings. And there is yet time for God's design concerning them to be fulfilled. We are going to pray together. All right? Thank you, Jesus. Hold in. Father, we come in the name of Jesus. We thank you because you are a good God. Your dad is not here? Hmm? He's home? Okay. Father, we thank you because you are a good God and there is none like you, Lord. We thank you because you are a loving Father. You are a compassionate Father. You are a providing Father. You are a protecting Father. We pray that our hearts will be Align to your hearts, that our hearts will melt with your heart, Father. 
we pray that our steps will be synchronized. And I pray for every father in this house. I pray that all of us will be a true reflection of our Heavenly Father. Father, we acknowledge that quite often we are a poor reflection of you, but yet we trust in your grace. We pray through responding positively and a prayer life and a faith life and being gracious and being worshiping you, Father. We pray that we will be able to import godly traits into our next generation. We bless the fathers in the name of Jesus and we bless the offsprings in the name of Jesus. Lord, your word says that children shall be in the place of their fathers. And may it be so, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Please be seated.